Paul. Um, hi. Um, looking back now, how do you reflect on the tour of India, and do you think your team have got that out of their system now? Uh, well, I certainly don't want to look back. I think I've had enough time over the past eight weeks to look back. It's about looking forward. Um, we're here for a complete different tour, obviously one-day tournament compared to test matches that we just played in India. So uh, this group is very focused on what's in front of us. We know um, how tough the Champions Trophy tournament is and, and how tough international one-day cricket is around the world these days with teams being so close together. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough tournament, there's no doubt about it. We know we're going to have to beat our best. And at this stage, we're uh, certainly very focused on making sure we're as well prepared as we can be for that first game. I'm just wondering, back in Australia, the federal government has introduced legislation to ban in-play betting. And given the scandals that cricketers had with betting, I'm interested in your views on this. It's certainly something I haven't thought too much about, to be honest. I think... Um, in regards to the Australian cricket team, I can only really talk about us. I know we are very well educated on what is legal and what is illegal. Um, cricket Australia and the ICC go out of their way to uh, make it very clear in regards to what standards you have as, a, as an international cricketer and as a player, you have to uphold um, those standards. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess, like I say, it's something I haven't thought too much about in regards to... Uh, the Australian cricket team, and I know, like I say, we are regularly um, educated on what is right and what is wrong. Michael. Dwayne Bravo has just told us that he accepts that he thinks he's in the, the group of death. Uh, the implication there is you're in the easier group. Uh, and just secondly, how important is the game against England to lay down a marker for the Ashes? Uh, I think both groups are very hard. I think there's um, obviously only four teams can go through, so... Uh, to me, it's about making sure come that first game you're as ready as, as you can be. There's no, I don't think there's enough time in this tournament to build momentum like you might be able to do in a World Cup, for example. Um, and in regards to England, well, it's a very important game because it's the first game in this tournament for us. I, I don't think you know we as a team are, are focused on the Ashes at all in this at this stage. No doubt, there's there's a lot of build up in regards to media and public um, back home, and I'm sure it's the same here in England. So. Um, you know, I certainly have no dramas in, in speaking about it and, and, and hearing about, uh, about the Ashes because it's a, it's a fantastic series that every Australian cricketer looks forward to. Uh, but in regards to this tournament, uh, as a team, I don't think we are, we are focused on um, stamping our mark against England. We, we might be focused on stamping our mark against England for the rest of this series, this tournament, but that's got nothing to do with, with the Ashes. Thank you. I guess as a ground, the uh, Swalek Stadium holds sort of mixed memories for you. A few runs, but a win and a draw over the past few years. Yeah, it's um, well, I think England in general has mixed memories for me. Um, some tough times, no doubt about it, but some great times as well. Um, it's a fantastic tour, there's no doubt, doubt about it. I know every Australian player I've played with has loved touring the, uh, touring the UK, uh, and this tour will be no different for us. So there's a lot of guys that haven't played much cricket over here. Um, but hopefully we can have some more weather like this, sun trying to break through and um, get outside and train today. I think the boys are really excited to, to get a hit today. Facilities are great here in, in Cardiff and um, you know every tour I've been on to the UK, we get looked after like gold, so it's a, it's a fantastic place and hopefully we can enjoy the next four months. When you look around the dressing room these days, you see a lot of young faces, new faces. Does that sort of make you feel the senior statesman within the group, or do you still? Does it feel make me feel old? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, I think it's exciting. I think the team's in a really exciting place at the moment. Um, obviously, we're uh, in both forms of the game, all three forms of the game. We're we're really chasing consistency. Uh, I find. You know, we play some fantastic cricket at home in conditions that we're, we're very accustomed to, very used to. But, you know, our most recent tours, whether it be in the one-day format or test format, haven't been as consistent as we would like overseas out of Australia. So, you know, everybody's learning. Um, we've got a fantastic group. I think, I think the players in the group are working exceptionally hard at the moment. Uh, everyone's trying to get better every single day, and that's all I can ask for as a captain. Um, and I've got a lot of faith in the guys. I'm really confident that the way we are training, the way we are working, uh, the guys' attitudes, I'm really confident we can have some success in, in this Champions Trophy. 
Michael, uh, Ricky Ponting said today that he would never say never for a possible call-up. Can you imagine a situation where you might make that phone call? Uh, well, I think it, that's right. You should never say never in life, uh, that's for sure. But I think Ricky also made it very clear that his time um, had finished at international level. He's retired from the Australian cricket team and uh, I hear he's very focused and, and excited about being a part of the Surrey team. So, um, yeah, right now we have a 15-man a Champions Trophy squad uh, and then we'll have a 16-man Ashes squad. Um, Ricky's not selected in either of those squads at this stage. <laughs>